My name is Pam Warden. I'm a physical therapist. I work in a clinic where I treat back patients and people, other people that have injured their spine. Today's topic is about proper posture and body mechanics. I'd like to start out by speaking a little bit about back injuries in general. 80% of the population will experience back pain or an injury sometime in their lifetime. Back injuries seldom happen as the result of one single injury. Most of the time, back injuries happen as a result of wear and tear to our spines over time. I liken this to an example I use is a bridge. If you see a bridge that's worn out and kind of crumbling, you, you pretty much know that that bridge wasn't built yesterday and that that many, many vehicles have gone over that bridge and as time has gone by, months, years, there has been wear and tear on that bridge. I liken that to our spines too. The, thing, the positive thing is that we can do things to decrease the wear and tear on our spines and hopefully decrease the chance of injury. Maintaining the proper curves in our spine is the key. This is a model of a human spine this is at the neck, and I'd like to just show you the curves of the spine. The curve inward happens here at the neck, and then in the middle back, there's a slight curve outward, another curve inward in the lower part of the back, and at the very lowest part of the back, there is another curve outward. Basically, if we can maintain these proper curves within our posture and body mechanics, basically throughout our everyday activities, we can reduce the wear and tear placed on, that spine, on our spines and reduce the chance of injury. What we're going to start talking about now is sitting posture. I've asked Kathy to come and be a model for us so we can demonstrate what proper posture and maybe a little bit about what isn't proper posture. Again, just to reemphasize the importance of proper posture is to reduce that wear and tear on your, on your spine. Okay. And what we're going to do is start out with Kathy in kind of a bad posture. Go ahead and, okay, and I bet this looks familiar to a lot of people. Okay, um, the, the biggest concept, again, about proper posture is what we've talked about already, is maintaining those natural curves. So I'll show you kind of how we get her into that good position. The first thing I'd like to do is have Kathy uncross her legs. Crossing your legs adds a little bit of a rotation into your spine, and that having that rotation can actually put a little more strain on, on your back. Then we're going to scoot your buttocks all the way back to the back of the chair so that she's supported. And I want her feet, make sure I want her feet supported so that her hips and knees that are, are about at a 90 degree angle. Okay, and, and the thigh is about horizontal parallel to the floor. Okay. Basically, then, we are going to have her chest lifted, and we are going to show a little bit, too, about some cushions. This is one example of many type of products out there, but you can see how this cushion is narrower at the bottom and then comes into that curve. So what I'd like to just show is that would go all the way down, so that's all the way down to the bottom, pretty much, of the chair and fits in her curve. You may need to adjust that as appropriate. I, I usually suggest these kinds of things for someone that has a sitting job, that has to sit all day long or spends a lot of time in the sitting position. A couple other things you can do is using, one thing you can do is use a towel, and I'm just going to take this basic towel and roll it up, and you can use this in a couple different ways to help support your spine. And we're going to, one way you can do that is to put this towel in the curve of the spine, like that. Another way, and this time I'll have you scoot forward, Kathy, so this, we can show that, is to take the towel and just basically sit with it. Okay, good. So you're basically just sticking it under the back of the buttocks, and that prevents the spine from rolling back. Okay? Then the chest should be held up. The shoulders back and relaxed, the chin should be in slightly, and the head in line with the body. And the reason, again, with the proper posture, they've done studies showing that sitting in poor posture actually puts more strain on the spine than 
lifting sometimes does. So it may not seem like a big deal, but this is very a, a, a good way to start taking care of your spine. Now we have Kathy seated at an office workstation. There's a couple things to keep in mind here. First of all, most offices have chairs that are adjustable in height, and we already talked about how you want to have your hips and knees bent and your feet supported, so you can think about that when you're adjusting the height of your chair. Also, you'd like to have the keyboard at your elbow height, and that works for a better um, position for your arms and shoulders. Then, your monitor should be at about eye level, so the middle of that screen comes to about eye level. The other thing you'd like to keep in mind when you're at, in a sitting position is if you do have to reach for something, like say for example Kathy's going to reach for that tape, you want to bend your hips and reach over and get it versus rounding your spine. The most efficient way though is to really bring everything that you need to reach within arm's reach so that you don't need to be reaching way over. Next we're going to consider the standing position and talk about a little bit about what's proper standing posture and again a little bit about what's not such proper standing position. Okay, I'd like to have you just slouch forward, Kathy, just kind of let your shoulders round forward, look at, the, look at the ground. This is one example of a poor standing posture. You can see how she's overly rounded in her spine here. She doesn't have her curve in her neck or her back the way we like it. So that's one bad posture. Another posture is when people stand with their hips forward and, their, and kind of leaning back with the knees locked. So maybe if you could, no, I'm going to still have you this way. I'm going to have you just, yep. And that, then this curve gets overemphasized. So basically what you want to do is maintain the natural curves. You don't want to um, have excessive curves and you don't want too little of a curve. So you want to keep this natural curve in the back of your spine here. The chest should be lifted, the shoulders back with the chin in. I often tell people to hold their tummy in and that kind of helps support the spine, particularly if you're going to be in a standing position for an extended period of time. Okay, then you can turn and face that way and just um, stand on one leg for me just to show. Basically what you want to avoid is standing. A lot of people will stand like this with their positioning over one leg. And what we recommend is that you kind of keep your weight equal over both feet. If you do have a habit of kind of standing over on one side, make sure you change that position frequently. And I'm going to have you face the front once more, about there. Another thing that we talk about is making sure that we stand with our knees slightly bent. Sometimes what we tend to do is lock the knees back. So go ahead and just lock those knees all the way back. And that'll put more of an arch in our, excessive arch in our lower back, and we don't want that either. So usually what I tell people to do to find the proper position is to lock the knees all the way back and then just soften them a little bit. And then you can decide if you're standing with your knees, normally your normal standing position, if it's standing with your knees locked back or not. Now we're going to speak a little bit about body mechanics. That sounds like a big word, but really all it means is the art of maintaining our proper spinal curves during your everyday activities. We can talk about sitting positions and we can talk about standing positions, and that's all well and fine, but the, the reality is, is that we don't just sit and stand all day, we move. Basically, a few things to keep in mind. You want to keep your work at a good height for you, at about waist level. Um, and basically what you want to do is if you're working on something near the floor, you want to get down to that level. If you're working on something higher up, you want to get yourself up to that level. Another concept to remember is that you should change positions frequently. Even a good position held for a really long period of time is not the best thing for your spine. So basically, you want to get up, move around every 15 or 20 minutes or so. And um, that will help improve the circulation, get oxygen flowing to those muscles and ligaments and, and keep everything healthy. Part of body mechanics we're going to talk a little bit about first is pushing and pulling objects. Basically what I'd like to do is have Kathy show me how she would push and pull this bedside table without me telling her how to do it. 
Okay, I'd like you to stop right there, Kathy. What you can see here when you look at Kathy's spine is how overly rounded, you know, I said we do have a curve in our spine, but this is excessive. So she's putting a fair amount of increased strain on her back at this point. What I'd like to do, Kathy, is just have you stand here for a second. And we're going to, I'm going to show you the proper way to move, and then we'll add the pushing and pulling into it. What I'd like you to do is to step forward with one foot. So we have one foot in front of the other, and I'd like both of her feet to be pointed straight ahead, really going into the direction that you're moving. Okay, and then what you're going to do is a lunge movement. We're going to lunge forward, and we're going to lunge back. And see, this position, her back stays with the normal curves. She doesn't get that excessive rounding in here, and there's less strain on the spine. So she is going to use that lunging position to push this bedside table. Okay. So again, you're going to start, Kathy, with one foot in front of the other, and then you're going to do that lunge. Your arms and your back are really going to stay pretty still. You're almost going to lock them in that position and then go ahead and push forward and then pull back. Very good. Once more. Good. And weight shifting like that is, okay, thank you. Weight shifting like that is an excellent way to maintain proper spinal position. And you, if you notice me pushing this before, I'm still kind of using, you can lunge in different directions of push and pull. So for example, it's really not an efficient movement for me to walk around here and push this to the side. I just want to push it over there so I can separate my feet and do a side lunge and move that, move that table over in that direction. Okay, the next thing I'm going to talk about is household activities such as sweeping or vacuuming. Okay, and we're going to use this dowel rod as our broom and our vacuum cleaner, okay? <laughs> Basically, what, what you want to do, again, with all these activities is think about shifting your weight forward, back, side to side, on diagonals, whatever way works, but you're keeping your spine in a proper position. Okay, so for example, if I was sweeping, I would want to sweep and shift at the same time, okay? And as I turn my feet to go in different directions, it's also important to bring both feet along with you so that you're not, if I start and I'm over here with my, my, my one leg way over here, that puts more of a strain on my knee. So I want to turn both my feet and kind of have them in the direction that I'm moving and just keep doing that weight shifting. With vacuuming, it's very similar as the push-pull maneuver that we did. Basically, again, you're going to have one foot in front of the other, and you're going to keep everything pretty much locked up top, the arm and the back, and you're going to lunge forward and back. You can move your arm a little bit with this, but it's really more coming from the legs. Okay, And then as you change, step with your feet to change positions again so you don't get that twisting in your legs. So with all of these activities that we've just discussed, the concept to remember is to move your body as a whole unit and not overly moving at your back. We're going to talk a little bit now about kind of some everyday activities. And one activity in particular I like I think about when we do our our, every, our, our everyday experiences is um, brushing our teeth. And in that kind of situation, you can't really change the height. You know, we talked about changing the height of the chair and things, but you, you can't really change the height of your, of your bathroom sink on a, you know, whim. So basically, we're going to show Kathy brushing her teeth and how to do that in a proper position. So basically, what I'd like you to do, Kathy, is to go ahead and bend your knees a little bit, okay, and then bend at your hips for me and really lean forward. And see, she's bending but she's really bending again at her hips, like we talked about in the sitting position, and she's maintaining the curves here in her lower back. The other thing that you can do, and, and Kathy's already doing this without thinking about it, is kind of putting your hand there for a little support, and that will help, because when you are bent forward like this, your muscles do have to kick in and work here, but if you have this little bit of support, then you, your muscles don't have to work quite as hard. Okay, very good. Then. I'd like to talk a little bit about how to, hold, how to move objects. And basically, we're going to pretend that this pan has, is, is a little bit on the heavier side. Maybe it has some water in it. But basically, I'd like you to pick it up from out here, Kathy. 
okay? And basically what I'd like to show here is, especially if she has a weight in here, when it's farther out from her body, that's gonna put more strain. These muscles that in her shoulders and her back are gonna work, have to work much harder to hold that ba basin up than if she's in here. The, those muscles still have to work, but they don't have to work as hard now. Okay, Kathy, what I'd like you to do now is, without me telling you, how I'd like you to take that basin and put it on that chair behind you. Okay, and basically, very good, you can come back up. Actually, it wasn't so good. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> what we talk about with that is the, bend, the twisting, the bending, and the lifting all at one time is one of the most common injuries that we see. It's kind of like, yeah, I was picking up this steel and I was just bent over, bend, twist, and lift all at the same time. So basically, what I'd like to have you do, Kathy, now is to take the basin again, hold it close into your body, and turn with your feet, take steps all the way around, and then dip with your knees and keep your back straight to set it down, and then lift back up, okay? I'd like you to take it again from the chair, pick it up, good, and bring it back around and set it properly on the table here. Just one quick point, I see a lot of people that we, we try to pick apart their work environment or even things that they do at home, and I say, this is how you should do this, you know, this is the safest way to do it, and they say, you know what, I don't have time for that. So basically, I'm here to say, you know, you do have time, and back injuries take a lot more time out of your, your everyday life than doing these things properly. I've worked with people and they can't, it takes a little practice, it takes a little time to feel comfortable with it, but it is possible to turn yourself, your body that way just as quickly as it does to bend and twist in that position. Now we're gonna speak a little bit more about body mechanics, but specifically about lifting. Kathy is gonna show us the wrong ways and the right ways of lifting. Okay, first thing I'd like you to do, Kathy, is actually take the crate um, and bring it towards you back up, good. And I'm gonna have you put that crate on the floor without any, you know, just without thinking about it. Okay, now you can see in this position, she completely rounds out all the curves in her spine and she's putting her muscles have to work very hard in this position to, to lift up that crate, okay? So as she comes back up, those muscles have to really, really pull in and work there. So I think most of you have probably heard somewhere along the line that it's important to bend your knees when you lift. Unfortunately, that isn't all you have to worry about. What I would like to recommend is I'm going to um, actually, what I'd like you to do is show me how you would do it with a little bit of a bend in your knee, okay? But see, then she's still rounding and still getting, you know, this isn't quite as bad as doing it all the way from the top, but definitely she's getting way too much rounding and her muscles still have to work really hard to do this activity. Okay, come back up. All right, so to do this properly, what I'm gonna have you do, Kathy, is to separate your feet a little bit more. That gives your body a little bit more of a base of support. Continue holding it nice and close into you. And you're gonna keep your chest lifted now as you go down and keep your back straight, but you're gonna, you're gonna perform a full squat all the way down to the floor. And you're gonna set it down, perfect. Bring it back up to you and come up. So the movement, it's okay. You know, you have to remember it's not okay just to lift it properly. It's also important that you set it down properly. What we just had Kathy do right now is called a squat lift. So I'd like her to demonstrate that again and just dip down. Good. And then come back up. Another lift we teach is called the diagonal lift. And the only difference with that lift versus this one is that instead of having your feet apart side to side, you have your feet apart one leg in front of the other. So I'll have you just maintain that kind of position, Kathy. And then the, the rest of it is all the same. You keep the back straight and you bend the hips and knees and come all the way down and set it onto the floor. Good, and then come back up. Very good, okay. Another lift that we do is, and I suggest for more heavier items, is called a one knee lift. Go ahead and set the crate back down, Kathy. And I'd like you to come onto, so you're kind of kneeling down onto this, onto your uh, left knee, okay. And basically what you wanna do from this position, so she's kneeling on her one knee, is to bring the crate up onto your opposite knee, good, to help give you a little bit of support and then push all the way on up. 
Okay, so those are the three kind of heavy lifts from the floor ways of doing things. Another lift we commonly teach is called a golfer's lift. If you've ever watched golf on television or played golf, you see how people will hold on to their golf club and reach down and get their ball out of the cup. Similarly, we're going to use that same movement to lift light objects. This is not meant for heavy lifting. Or if you're in a situation where you have to lift over, for example, if you have to grab linen out of a bin that's that's deep. I have to do that at work all the time, so I kind of stick my leg out there and perform the golfer's lift. So Kathy is going to demonstrate. We're going to put the, the pen on the floor there and have you go ahead and pick it up by taking one leg out behind you. And, you know, another thing you can do is you can kind of hold on to an object. Sometimes that gives you some support in there. So go ahead and, yep, very good, and come on back up. The other thing I'd like to talk a little bit about is how how you can see from how physically taxing this really is to do this proper to do lifting properly and a lot of times what I see in my work as a therapist is I see people that come in with a back injury that are doing very very heavy jobs but they're not very strong and they're not very flexible in their bodies so that's why I always tell my my patients in the clinic that being a work you know being a worker whether you're a nursing assistant or you're a factory worker you have to be, have a certain amount of physical condition. Basically, basketball players don't just play basketball. They run or do conditioning work and do strength and flexibility. And I'm not suggesting you all go out and start running. You certainly should consult your physician or, or a physical therapist about a proper exercise program. But if you're struggling with, with a back injury and you're not very, you don't feel like you're very strong, you can see maybe why that's a problem because you really have to have pretty much strength in your legs to be able to do these lifts properly. In wrapping up about proper posture and body mechanics, I'd like to just go over the few key points that we've made throughout this time we've been together. One is always maintain the natural curves in your spine. Second, always bend at your hips and knees and keep your back straight when you're doing any kind of lifting. Third, Move your body as a unit. Again, when you're moving, pushing something, pulling something, sweeping, vacuuming, for example, always move as a unit. Also, avoid twisting so that you're, you're not doing this kind of a movement, but it's more the moving at your feet. Also, remember to hold the loads close to your body because in close here, it's much less strenuous than holding them away from your body here. And lastly, the things we've shown you today are pretty, very straightforward and basic. When you get out in the real world, you're going to encounter situations that aren't so cut and dry and easy to just decide, you know, how should I do this? So my, my, the way my suggestion is, is always to remember those few key points, look at a situation and sort of analyze it. Now, how can I do this best? You may not be able to do every situation perfectly. You know, life, like I said, life isn't perfect. You're not going to be able to always move just so perfectly. But if you can get to the point where you're doing it whenever you can, you're still going to reduce the risk of placing that wear and tear on your spine and putting more strain on and then injuring yourself. I'd like to thank you for your attention today, and I'd like to wish you all good luck in maintaining a healthy spine.